Let's see. You take the notorious multi-century nightmare that black people suffered through in the Western Hemisphere, and in a truly brazen and grotesque manner, make a game and absolute mockery of that horrific suffering. And then you want to turn around and talk about diversity and people of color and representation, and act like you give a cent about the same people you utterly disrespect, devalue, and exploit. And you want to paint yourself as someone benevolent. You can kiss my queer tush. And you want to talk about privilege? You treat some of the worst suffering of humanity as jack-off material for yourself and your little posse and minions, and then in the midst of your misogynist, racist, soulless behavior, want to talk about love and kindness and compassion and act like you have a high ground above other people when you absolutely reek of misogyny, cruelty, and right supremacy yourself. How dare you? Hello listeners, and welcome to A Dash of Salt with AJ. I'm your host, Ahsoka Jackson. I'm going to have to move quickly here because there is a lot to cover. And even so, I'm still probably going to have to make more episodes about this than I initially planned. Though for now, it'll just be two. And then, further on down the line, we can return to this subject. Now, as I talk about all this, I'm keeping in mind my personal experiences with a cadre of people like this who I've had to deal with in writing groups and writing websites that I've been on. In particular, there's sort of a ringleader, uh, whom I usually refer to with the nicknames Lady X or Lady Laura McKamey or other terms. And let me assure you, the nicknames I use for her are far nicer than she deserves. But it's not just about her or them. It's about what they represent. It's about the much larger issue that needs to be addressed and dealt with. Now to that end, there's a list that I need to share with you. It'll be relevant for this episode, the next one, and future episodes dealing with the subject matter. But before I share the list, I want to quickly address a couple of arguments in advance. The first is the privacy argument. All right. A, there's already history of using that as an excuse to avoid facing and intervening in situations where there is child abuse, spousal abuse, things of that nature, and also to avoid talking about sexual predation. That isn't something we talk about here. That's a private matter, right? And B, and this is probably kind of a bigger point, it's no longer private when you are busy trying to change the law, when you're using media like books and movies and other formats to promote, defend, and normalize this sort of thing. And certainly not private when you go on a platform largely frequented by young people and use that to churn out this despicable, deplorable, racist BS, all right? So don't talk to me about privacy when you're sure are not keeping this private. The other argument is the whole guilt versus shame thing. Now, some people do make a distinction between the two, and that's a bit of a, we require more time to, you know, parse that out and talk about that. But here's the thing, in dealing with these people, that's really not how I see them using it. They're not saying, that the guilt is good but the shame is bad, they're using this shaming argument to basically say, you have to approve of this. You shouldn't say anything negative about this. You have to pretend that this is all right. How dare you make someone feel bad about doing this? And that's generally how I see the whole shaming uh, phrase or term used. It's basically the argument people resort to when they don't have a genuine argument to defend what they're doing. It's like saying, you're deadbeat dad shaming me. Sure, abandoning my child and the woman who bore him was wrong, and I may have left my child with years worth of damage to deal with, but I just say, you're shaming me, and voila, I'm a victim. And so with that in mind, I'll go ahead and share this list, and yes, I will be running through it quite quickly. Now, like I said, they use this shaming thing, and they use their works in general, to essentially say that this kind of stuff is okay, to say that it's all right. Well, let's look at what they're saying. Let's really look at it. It's okay if you get off on seeing women of other races abused and humiliated. It's okay if you get off on seeing people whose bodies are so wrecked from subjecting themselves to violations that they're prolapsing or permanently gaping and their bodies thus can't even function normally. It's okay to want to see women have penises shoved down their throats until they vomit and then see them consume the resulting mixture of vomit and regurgitated semen. It's okay if you want to see people dress up with pacifiers and baby clothes so that you can pretend you're raping a toddler. 
dying to see Muslims or women in Muslim garb sexually humiliated and used so that you can satisfy your at best ignorant and misguided resentment? It's all good, bro. Want to see portrayals of Nazis getting on with their victims? Gigas in the hat. It's okay if you want to pretend that someone is your child so that you can simulate molestation, or to dress yourself in diapers, etc., and then pretend that your spouse, whichever person you're in a sexual relationship with, is your parent. You like seeing women spat on and choked? Here's the belt to deal with with. You want to pretend that you're preying on your friend's teenage daughters behind their backs? Go for it. You want to feed your birth of a nation mindset by watching a black guy or group of them use and abuse a Caucasian woman? Let's have a watch party. Want to shove people's heads in toilets? Don't forget to flush. There's a lot of people being raped or gang raped turns you on? Let's play pretend. Want to have a consensual sex slave to torture at will and then perhaps praise for being such a good little boy or girl and taking the abuse? Let's get you a sign-up sheet. Love the idea of people banging corpses? We can definitely simulate that. Enjoy. You like the idea of having your private parts mangled and crushed? Who are we to object? Cue the crushing. Want to satisfy your hatred of religion by shoving religious-themed objects into people's orifices as an act of defilement? Or by mistreating people wearing religious or pseudo-religious garb? Be our guest. You're black and you get off on having Caucasian enact on you a light version of the mind-numbingly horrendous torture and rape your ancestors were subjected to? No screws loose there, clearly. You like having foreign objects jammed into your urethra till you bleed? Here's a pencil. Want to see hands, fists, and free forearms shoved up people's vaginas and rectums, or subject yourself to that? Go for it. You want to see people lick and suck on a penis right after it's been up their lower digestive tract? We already have a handy acronym prepped. ATM. Anal to mouth being the slightly less rude set word sets to vibe from. And of course, there's also a vaginal counterpart to that. Sucking the delightful mixture of semen and your own vaginal fluids and mucus off the guy's penis after he penetrates you. Want to insert a toothbrush into your rectum and then brush your teeth with the feces-covered brush? Just make sure to use some crest afterwards. Or don't, I mean, we're not judging here. Incest? Ooh, that's highly popular, especially the parent-child stuff. Now, which kind of incest would you like to simulate? Father-daughter, mother-son, brother-sister, father-son, grandparents molesting the grandchildren? We got it all! Fecal matter? Let's play. Urine? All you can drink. Vomit? Bottoms up. Semen? Someone else's or your very own ejaculate? Tasty. A unique form of cannibalism where a living victim allows someone to amputate and then consume part of their body. Get your forks, people. And that, my dear friends, is just a sampling of the available kinks. You know, the stuff we're not supposed to shame people about. And here's the thing. You think you're something new, special, and exotic with your fetishes and your kinks? No. Black people in America are veterans at being on the receiving end of both sexual sadism and general sadism. Sexual violence, sexual exploitation, being raped and molested on a regular basis, being worked to death, beaten to death, and tortured to death. This kind of thing happened not only under slavery itself, but also the era of lynching, sharecropping, and Jim Crow that came afterwards. And it wasn't just the men who did this, no. Women got in on the act too, and so did children. To quote what one little nine-year-old boy said to his mother, I have seen a man hanged. Now I wish I could see one burned. Another account that comes to mind is some little cute white school children telling a guy, quote, we had fun burning the N-word. And now fast forward to today, you can go on Wattpad and see a teenage white girl with the master and slave roleplay book, complete with a torture chamber chapter and an auction block chapter. Meet your benevolent saviors and leaders of tomorrow, everybody. And then adults, the same adults who promote, glamorize, and normalize the kinds of things that were on that list, both specifically and implicitly promote this stuff, Adults who encourage grotesque acts of self-abuse and the abuse of other human beings want to then turn around and wash their hands of what they see the children doing. They want to talk about, quote, healthy boundaries. You can freaking bite me. You're exactly where these children get this demented BS from, and it's absolutely your fault and your responsibility. You don't get to distance yourself from this. If you want to talk about things like privilege and white supremacy, then lynching and slavery, sometimes known as the Black Holocaust, are both ultimate expressions and points of origin. Next episode, I'm continuing discussion of so-called kinks, fetishes, and BDSM, and how they relate to Black people and racism. I'll also explain why I'm choosing to focus on the Black or African American segment before I start discussing the connections to other affected groups like Asian, Latino, and Indigenous individuals. In the meantime, if you enjoyed the show, please leave a like, share, or review on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, social media, or whichever platform you use to listen. Be blessed and stay salty.